I'm your host, Modest, and today we have an amazing episode. It's Youth Month in South Africa, and we're just focusing on the youth. We are going to have special conversations just to understand the youth and uh, how it is on the ground and uh, the ears and what we think about the gospel and how we can just authentically be youth and be Christian as well. And today I'm not alone. I have special guests with me. I have Nobo and I have Sean. You know, as we just started off, would you just introduce yourself and get the people to know who you are, Mm. what you do and what spaces you're involved in so that, you know, Mm. just get to know you. Awe. Um, so you're speaking to Noble, um, aka Saint Noble. Like, comment, subscribe, if you will. Um, yeah, I would describe myself. Or well, what I do is I'm a story time animator. So I make story time animations, funny story time animations, um, on YouTube, um, on Instagram, and other socials. And I would also describe myself as an apologist, um, but mm. for the streets, apologist. Yes, sir. <laughs> Apologetics for the homies, you know. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, and yeah, that's me. I'm also a digital artist. So I'm a videographer, photographer, graphic designer, etc. You know, so yeah, doing it quite a lot, man. Doing the Lord's work, you know. What I'm Amen, brother. So yeah, that's what we're about. Oh, yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Shonise, um, Shani McKenzie for any kind of social media platforms that you'd like to reach me mm-hmm. by. I am an academic lecturer and facilitator and yeah, and also an assessor. Yeah, Amazing. All right, I love that. I love the fact that you guys are already involved in like secular spaces. Mm. Now, like just um, in terms of just keeping that connection with your faith, while being in this secular spaces, what, what's your secret? How do you guys navigate that strong connection to God, to your faith? Mm-hmm. Just being authentic to yourself while being in these spaces that are secular, where it's like a thin line where you have to be yourself, but at the same time, you have to as well keep your faith. And sometimes people look at you and you might lose money sure. or maybe feel like, okay, I need to be this guy in order to get this money. Mm. So how do you navigate around that thin line of just keeping that strong connection to your faith as well just being fully involved in the industry and markets that you guys get involved in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you want to go first. All right. <laughs> I'll go first. <laughs> so um, my kind of journey is actually not necessarily taken like fully into the secular space per se, because what I currently do is purely actioned or connected um, towards people that are part of a program called In Pursuit, which is what my church offers yeah. uh, between the age groups of like 17 or 18 up until the age of like 25, 26. And so I'm um, with the experience that I've had, I will say that it's not everyone that enters into the program that is completely saved. They've entered into the program being unsaved or maybe because they didn't want to waste another year of their lives. Maybe they didn't, they were not cemented. I mean, I am a product of not being cemented and knowing what was going to take place after high school. So I myself entered into the program because I'm like, I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to sit at home and do nothing. You know, um, so knowing that I I can now be at a place where I'm exposed to students that enter into this program in the same way that I did when I was once a student in the program and knowing how I can kind of link that to my walk or my faith because you... (laughs) It's something that I was mentioning earlier. Mm. Persecution is something that will come from many different aspects and in many different ways. You'll find yourself being exposed to someone that is um, maybe cold in their faith or the way they walk, they're unsaved. You find that there's someone that is has encountered the Lord, but because of the decisions they make, they're lukewarm in the way that they walk faithfully. Mm. You know, And so for those kind of individuals that I come into contact with, how I maintain being faithful is in understanding that I need to meet people where they're at and even more than that, I need to understand the responsibility that is on my life the minute I made the decision to follow God mm. and knowing that I cannot turn around and point a finger. You yeah, know, the word yeah. does say, remove the log out of your eye. Your, your own eye before you even get to recognize the splinter in another's eye so for me it's more so just about Buzz. recognizing that sure I was in a worse position than this person at their age mm. so who am I to judge and let me rather just be in a space of being exposed to this rather not having that be a, a threat to me or having that put me off course 
of the purpose that God has called me to, but rather that be more of a re- revelation as to why I'm here and why I do what I do. So I don't necessarily receive it as like a threat with dealing with those kind of spheres. Um, you exposed to the world and mm. <laughs> things of the world, but you do not have to, though we are in the world, you don't have to be of, of the, the world, world. you know? So, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so the, the question is, how do I navigate being a Christian in these secular spaces? No? Yeah, just the, uh, keeping that, maintaining that strong connection to your faith mm. and being in these secular uh, spaces where it's not just, easy to be yeah, yourself yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Um, so I would say one of the things that really helped me do that how to be in the world but not of the world yeah. um, I would say is being kingdom minded having a kingdom mentality a kingdom occupy the kingdom must occupy you know yeah. um, I think that's what it's about like um, Jesus made it very clear God into all of the world and make disciples of all nations yeah so I feel like probably a mistake that we make as Christians is we think that all oh, ministry or being a Christian or being 100% Christian is for church, it's for your pastor, it's for mm. your elder. But now it's like you are called into business. You are mm. called into law. You're called into politics. You are called, you are ordained. Like one of the things that blew my mind is realizing that the first person in scripture to be filled with the Holy Spirit to do the work of the Lord was an artist. Wow. wow. Bezalel. Wow. Mm. He filled with the Holy Spirit to make art, to design the temple, the tabernacle, clothing, fashion. He was filled with the Holy Spirit to do that. And then you look at other examples. You look at Joseph in Egypt. Yeah. You look at um, Daniel, you know, in Babylon, how God promoted them, you know? Yeah. Secular positions, you know, doing the work of the Lord. So it's having a kingdom mentality to say that no, I'm not an artist and a Christian. No, I'm a Christian artist or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a part of me. It's my calling. I'm ordained yeah. to do this. Okay, the kingdom must integrate into the world of where I'm at, art and entertainment. Yeah. God wants me to be there. You know what I'm saying? It's not. Um, and secondly, I would say that it is being in the world, but not of the world. It is, it is nuance. It's not black and white. It really isn't. Um, there's grace and there's also persecutions. Yeah. Mm. So we need to realize like, yeah, that's, that's what it's like. That's why it's like being in those environments and, you know, Yeah. but yeah, it's, it's fun. It's amazing. Wow. That's amazing. Actually, mm. it, it brings me to a question, you know, like Sean, you spoke about you were in a moment in time where you were trying to, you were just, you were not certain what you're going to do and you're trying to figure out. And I feel like most of us, especially being youth now, sure. uh, we don't have it figured out. Yes. We are trying to find answers. We are trying to find, you know, find what's going to work. How are we going to end up somewhere where we're going to be of value? So like you guys, when you are in that position and in those moments, where would you say you find the vo- like you hear maybe from God or where do you go to to hear something that mm. gives you guidance or where did you go to at that time because even a, even being a christian sometimes it's it's hard to hear god yeah. when like uh, you are so saturated by the stress and the pressures and the challenges of life yeah. especially being young and probably you feel misunderstood so like in terms of you guys in those moments like where did you go to when you were searching for answers yeah when you needed answers, you needed solutions, like in those moments, mm. where did you go? What did you do? How did you navigate the voice of God yeah. in those situations? I think specifically it's mainly mm. just reaching or going back to finding the source of your salvation. The mm. minute that you you encounter God mm. and the minute that you recognize that living life by yourself or without Christ or without the will of God okay, in you, so. it's constantly, yeah. it's incomplete. You can find yourself whole, complete, and your physical life may not reflect what your encounter with God reflects, but because you know the truth through the revelation you've received of God, you can always work at aligning it. And yeah. of course, with your physical life, how you go about living on a day-to-day basis, it's to say, I can encounter God today. But when I go home tonight, I'm still the same physical person connected to the same family that's still the same. They didn't have the encounter I had, mm-hmm. you know. So whenever I'm challenged or rather finding things that would take me off course of my of 
being in pursuit of God and really living the will of God out fully, I always have to go back to the source of my salvation. I can't do it out of myself. It's not enough to just know about God, know that he exists in me, but know that when I am being tested and trialed, it's exactly the truth of what is found in his word. Sure. It's wow. exactly yeah. the truth of what is found in yeah. what he ministers to my heart when I'm praising and worshiping him. Yeah. We always start first by entering into his courts with giving thanksgiving and praise. Yeah. So it's in those moments that I can be reminded did you know what Shanice you're not perfect you're gonna go through things and that's exactly why you should come to me as you are so that I can break down those walls and I can minister to your heart and give you direction as to how to deal with what you're going through how to conquer the challenge you're facing there's no sense that we can see ourselves as walking testimonies if we don't first experience the test yeah. and for most yeah. parts we acknowledge the test and we stay stuck in the test because we try to figure it out by ourselves. <laughs> you know, we try to figure it out by ourselves. But God is like, hello, if you're a living, breathing, walking testimony, come to me, receive revelation of what my word is. Make that become true in your life that you can live it out yeah. and that you can conquer the current state you're going through. Don't worry. It's just a test. You may be going through it now, but you will get through it. And when you get through it, that will be the blessing that you get to share with other people. That's good. So that's how I remain that's constantly good. in pursuit of God and faithfully. It's just going back to the source of my salvation. When Satan's like, okay, let me try this attack. I'm like, mm -mm. <laughs> back to the source of my salvation. Let yeah. me be reminded of where I was when I got saved. I was brutally broken. My, my life reflected everything that was the complete opposite of what it's like with being in the presence of God. And because of that being a reminder for me every day, I can always tell myself, okay, I go back to the source of my salvation. The of the father that is able to love me and fill me with strength. If I'm too weak, I know where I need to go yeah. Yeah. to get strong. So, yeah. yeah. That's good. It's powerful. Yeah. I would say very similar. I want to start off with the relationship with God. It's mm. important. Um, you look at Jesus, you look at his life, you know. Many, many a times, scripture talks about how Jesus went to a solitary place. Yeah. You know, he went to a remote place. He went into the wilderness. When things were getting busy, you know, when John the Baptist um, died, lost his life, you know, when the crowds were looking for him, he was always like, you know, yeah. in the mountains somewhere, yeah. this guy, you know, in the mm -hmm. desert somewhere, yeah. praying and, you know, being with the Lord, hearing from him. So, yeah, definitely practically for me, what that looks like is <clears throat> praying, um, yeah. fasting, um, trying to really get better at those two specifically. Um, a place I've really um, grown a lot in and found a lot of, you know, um, familiarity with, it's the word of God, you know, mm. yeah. um, specifically the gospels, looking at Jesus, who he was to remind myself, okay, this is the founder of the faith. Yes. Yeah. This is who, and this is what it's about. So that's what it looks like practically going back to the Lord, going back to relationship. Secondly, uh, a lot of resources for me when I have tough questions, when I'm faced with a challenge or difficulty, or I'm uncertain, um, I go into basically artists, entertainers um, who are Christians who've gone ahead of me. So I go online, I search a question, for example, is God funny? What does the Bible say about humor? What does the Bible say about sarcasm, for example, right? Yeah. When yeah. I'm facing those questions myself or when I want to have this idea, but I'm not certain of how I feel about it, is it biblical or not? I go to those resources, I pull them out, you know, I watch yeah, those videos, cool. I listen to those podcasts. Mm. You know, yeah, really helpful, really simple, but, you know, King Solomon, you know, a wise man seeks advice. Amen. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I think... Okay. Those are two ways. Relationship and yeah, just wise counsel. Wow, that's mm. powerful. And now just being like both of you have experienced the love of God. Yeah. You've just that's that's why you have this close relationship with sure, God because sure. you experienced that love. And now just navigating through this sometimes secular environments yeah. and uh you get to meet different kinds of people. So when you are faced, maybe right. would you say you have some opportunities where you've had people that you feel like, okay, I think this person really needs Jesus. Mm. Mm. You know, I, I think, <clears throat> how do you, how are you guys navigating when you have such opportunities? Do you straight on just tell them about Jesus mm. or how do you face those situations mm. when you encounter them? That's a big one. Do mm. you want to take it first? <laughs> I'll, go. I'll go first. 
So I think it's like so it's like evangelism, right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. How do I encounter? So yeah, definitely. Um, I think I think everyone needs Jesus. I think Jesus was clear when he said that you know, um, the harvest is ripe, plentiful, yeah, plentiful. plentiful. Mm-hmm. You know, work but the work is of few. Yeah. So according to Jesus, at least everyone needs God. Yes. Amen. Mm-hmm. Everyone should get like even like the metaphor used. The harvest is plentiful. Exactly. Yeah. So everyone. So like. The whole world, Jay, that guy next door, the guy you think doesn't need Jesus, he wants God. This person mm. wants God. Yeah. So now it's just a matter of season and timing. Mm. Yeah. And he continues to say, pray to the Lord who's in charge of the harvest and he will send workers into his harvest fields. Mm. You know, so again, everyone wants God, but now it's a matter of, okay, yeah. who are you called to? Who are you not called to? Yeah. Mm. Because now I can't, He's the Lord of the harvest. You know what I'm saying? He's in charge. So, Manje, I can't just decide, okay, I'm going to go to ABCD community and decide that, you know what, I want to preach the gospel to you. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. God has ordained a specific person or people group to mm. speak to those people. Mm. Right? Like, at my church, we have a, a group called Cherished Ladies. Yeah. They go into, like, strip clubs. They go, like, to brothels, etc. And they reach out to women in these industries. Yeah. Oh, I'm not about to go to a strip club. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't got no business <laughs> in a strip club. Get me? <laughs> so, yeah. So, you need to realize, firstly, that, okay, you are called. Who is God calling you to? Because there are specific people that God wants you to reach. Yes. Yeah. You know, you're not called to everyone. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, yeah. and I think as Christians, we make that mistake. And we put a lot of pressure on us that mm. there's mm. no pressure needed, right? So who are you called to? And when I'm in these environments, um, like, for example, I'm a photographer, I'm a videographer. So I find yeah. myself a lot like clubs, mm. you know, where people are drinking, you know, indulging in A, B, C, and D, you know. Um, I remember the one time, yeah, I was at a club, brah. Yo, it was just like, and I was shooting and I was at the back just yeah. observing so initially, being in those environments, I used to have like a judgmental eye, sure. you know, looking at people, <laughs> you know. Sure. Yeah. We all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, but then this time specifically, because I was just observing, like I had my camera down, just looking at people dancing, people yes. drinking, you know. Mm. And it just hit me that, no, God loves these people. Amen. Yeah. God wants to reach these people. Amen. Hmm. So now it became a thing of, okay, so how does that happen? What's interesting is when you look at John chapter 4 now, yeah. Yeah. Jesus speaks to the Samaritan woman and then she goes to tell the town. Then the disciples pull up. They came from McDonald's and they pull up with the food and um, they're like, oh Lord, we saw you speaking to that woman. And then he's like, yeah, I've basically he's like, yeah, I've get nourishment from fulfilling the will of God. And then he's like, I've called you to harvest where you did not sow. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, so, okay, they're reaping a harvest, but Jesus did the sowing. Mm. So as far as evangelism is concerned, a person goes through a journey. Like let's say Mark is a non-believer. He goes through a journey of finding God. He doesn't just wake up and decide. You know, it's a journey. Mm. A seed is planted, it's watered, a harvest. Mm. Some of us are sowers. Some of us are harvesters. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes my job is just to ask the person how he or she is doing. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes my job is just to be kind. Sometimes my job is just to give a verse. It's not to close the sale. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's just to hand out the flyer. Mm. Mm. This is who Jesus is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, remind him like, yeah, you know, I'm talking to an Uber driver and I just be like, yeah, you know, one time Jesus said A, B, C, and D. I'm not Mm. like giving a full on gospel presentation. Yeah. Mm. But a seed's been planted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then next week he meets her. And, you know, he remembers, oh, he's encountered with me. And he's, she's telling him more about Jesus. And then he gives yeah. his life. That's a harvest. That he who sows and he who reaps rejoice together. Amen. So less pressure. Mm. It's Holy Spirit who does the work. It's not you to change mm. a person. It's not yeah. your job. My yeah. job is to plant a seed. Your job is to harvest it, you know. Yeah. Mm. And that's my approach entering into these environments. And because of that mentality, you know, sowing and reaping, I've had such freedom to be like, hey, you know, hmm. I'm here to represent Christ. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit, if I encounter a person and I'm talking to a person, and yeah. I'll let the Holy Spirit do his thing. If I find the window, I find it. If I don't, I'm not going to force it, you know? Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, I, I like the fact that you touched on um, 
certain people, you yeah. realize that they are, you are not called to go to them. Yes. And yes. So now it's like an audience. So how do you, just to add on to the mm. question, so in terms of when you are presented with these opportunities, how do you determine if mm. this is your audience, this is somebody you need to approach and talk to, or if it's, this is somebody that is not for you. Mm. So in those situations, how, how, do you, how do you do that? How do you navigate that? I think first, with any kind of approach that you take, when you're yeah. led by the Lord, you always do it in accordance of what the will of God is. So you reach out, you win the lost at any cost. <laughs> you know, you make the expensive cheap, you make the difficult mm. easy because you know you're not doing it as a result of pushing your own agenda. You're yeah. doing it as a result of knowing it is God that goes before me. Just one story, um, just from the Bible, if I can just reiterate or share if we think about it back then people would look at those that um, either go through certain life changes as dirty and it took for one lady that was seen as impure seen as dirty and she had so much faith she never knew what it's like to have an encounter with God mm. because no one knew the nature and the reality of what it is to walk a life of faithfulness yep. other than Jesus and the disciples that were following him yeah but she touched the hem of the garment of Jesus mm. and he felt that Just and hear. he turned around and he's like who was that? <laughs> you know? Who? And immediately, immediately, mm. I personally think that as much as it was done so many years ago, it's a testament to similarities we find in our lives now because it took for someone that was seen as impure, it took for someone that seemed uh, as less than, mm -hmm. seemed like they're not good enough, you know, to receive anything or to be a part of anything. It took that kind of individual to receive the blessing of God mm. through Jesus. It didn't take um, a person that was standing on the side and selling off their stuff, selling off the the fruits or the vegetables mm -hmm. it yeah. took one person that felt completely unrighteous one person that felt like everyone has mm -hmm. neglected everyone sees me as impure as dirty so because of what's happened in my life personally it's a thing of okay mm -hmm. i've experienced this so i'm not even human anymore so like, where do I turn to? Where do I go? Yeah. But yeah. even in that, something from inside told her, touch the hem of that gentleman's garment. Yeah. And immediately God was able to take that and be a revelation or rather be a testament to those of saying, you know what? Whoever you go to, whoever you reach out to, and I think it's very similar even for... um. The individuals we reach nowadays, you know, we cannot look at a murderer and think, oh, well, I'm, I'm better than that yeah. person. We don't know what they went through. We don't know what they've encountered. And last time I checked, God doesn't measure sin. Sin is sin. If you lie, it's the, it amounts to the same amount of sin as committing suicide. Sure. Yeah. You know, and so and God still in knowing, OK, do you believe in me? Do you love me? Still takes him in as your own. Yeah. So who are we then to be the 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 laborers, the soldiers of Christ, stepping out, winning souls, making disciples? Who are we to then judge people for the challenges they face or the natures they choose to hold on to or the experiences that they're exposed to? So sure, really, sure, sure. it's it's wow. it's a lot, man. But I'm really I'm, I'm constantly inspired and encouraged that sure. In what I'm doing, it's not all about what I know because as I'm helping the next person, my knowledge of what I think I know <laughs> is also being corrected and being sure. shifted and sure. geared. So I'm mm. blessed, man. Very yeah. grateful for that. In terms of just identity, you guys are, are grounded in your faith. That's something you identify by as Christians. Yeah. So now in these times of being somebody who's talented as you guys are, you know, with your talent, your talents can take you sometimes into secular places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, and you can be looked at sometimes as like, you're not know, Christian enough because why are you in there? Yep. Yeah. So it's it's difficult to pursue your talents mm -hmm. and simultaneously keep a, a good reputation in the Christian space. For example, I know somebody who's a, who's a dancer and um, she had to sort of, she was uncomfortable. She had to switch churches because mm. when people found out she's dancing in the secular places, mm. she was frowned upon in a way. And she, her faith was okay. And I think she just needed 
more guidance in her life. But she was frowned upon, and she loves that. She's passionate about dancing, mm. and she wanted to pursue that, mm. and yet just keep her identity. So now, in terms of like, at uh, yo yo you guys, in mm. terms of just maintaining your identity. And navigating in that secular space, how would you say you do it, and how would you yeah. advise somebody who's like in the secular space yeah. and like uh, being maybe <clears throat> frowned upon? Yeah. How do you keep your identity while while you just don't get lost in that world? So that's a good one. Um, so my background, I was very much a, a man, a man pleaser. I had a, a fear of men. Sure. Dealt with that, um, especially yeah. coming up as a teen. You know, yeah. I used to definitely want to please men, um, especially in the church. You know, I don't know, I don't know why specifically, but mm. I always felt the need like to always be the one who knew the most verses. You know, said the yeah. most profound things, prayed the most extravagant, and it's, you know, saying prayers and all that stuff. Um, so in a lot of ways, I've outgrown that, and I think two reasons. Number one, um. I'll start from the backwards going forwards. So firstly, we need to realize that you can't please everyone. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can't please the world. You can't please God. That's not going to happen. And you, you can't please the world. You can't please the church or people in the church. Mm. Not God. God is always pleased with you in Jesus' name. <laughs> um, so you can't please anyone. Jesus said, you know, um, John came not eating or drinking. Yes. And you mm. called him insane and crazy. The yeah. son of man, on the other hand, eats and drinks and you call him a glutton and a drunkard. Hmm. So it's like, what do you all want really, really? Like, <laughs> like you know, you're out here, you're judging yeah. John for being in the desert, loving God. You're judging me for being here, loving God. So it's like, at some point, like, right, you just have to realize like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you have mm. to really, you do not have to mind yeah. the comments and the persecutions of people because it's going to come, you know, especially yeah. from the church. If you're in those secular places, bro, like they're not going to get it. Like people can't make sense of like me, example, with me being in the clubs, shooting and get, getting content, you know, and being a Bible school student. They don't get that. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. can't make sense of that. But um, you just, you, you, you shouldn't mind that, you know? Yeah. It can't please people. Um, Jesus made it very clear. And then he continues to say, wisdom will be proven right by its results. Mm. So when you're in these places and these spaces, what are the results of you yeah. being there? Mm. Are people impacted? Yeah. What's, what's the feedback you're getting? You know, are you reaching people? You know, then if mm. you are leading people closer to Jesus, I think you're winning, bro. Yeah. Those, the results speak. You know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees can talk, but the results speak. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Secondly, I want to say is, not, don't be so wrapped up in who you are, what you think about yourself. Yeah. Be wrapped up in what God thinks about you. Mm. Yeah. So, and this is where like you really got to tap into who Jesus was. Yeah. So when Jesus um, one day was walking with the disciples and then he's like, hey, gents, yes, in there. I have a question for y'all. And they're like, ah, what's up? And he's like, what do people say about me? And they're like, yeah, some say Elijah, some say, you know, you Moses, yeah. whatever. And then he's like to Peter, but who do you say that I am? And then Peter's like, you are the son of God. You know, um, you came from... Now I'm forgetting. But yeah, you're the son of God. Mm. And then Jesus is like, well done, Peter. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven did. And I tell you that you are Peter. And upon this rock, I'll build my church. So it's like, once Peter encountered who Jesus was, Jesus told him who he was. Wow. Preach that. Informed preach, him brother. of who he was. Talk that talk. And imagine that security to be like, no, you know, Mo, no, Shanae, like, this is who you are. Mm. You are called to politics. You are called to art. You are yeah. called to business. Mm. So why, why must I mind? Sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's so deep. Wow. Well, mm. I think from my side, it's just a matter of really recognizing, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one, but... Mm. With me, how I did come to experience it firsthand is really that I was always looking for a sense of belonging. Mm. Mm. And in, in most cases, I kind of connected it to 
worldly things that I would think are sufficient enough to fill me, sufficient enough to make me whole, complete. Mm. Um, and obviously, when you go according to your own things that you are running after, you will reap your own results. And um, it, it led me to a point where I did, I have encountered, you know, the the word of God, but I didn't have a true revelation of what it is and what it means for me. But also... The Holy Spirit was always in me. The Holy mm. Spirit was always fighting for me. Mm. But what was I? Too stubborn to recognize that the voice <laughs> sure, of the Holy sure. Spirit is real, is true, sure. and stands in the gap on my behalf when I'm too weak to understand this thing called life. Mm. So I was yeah. so stubborn and it did lead me to a point where I had to experience exactly just what I think the world can give me and fill me with and it left me completely like yeah. broken. <laughs> yeah. Broken, broken, broken. You know, empty. More empty. I, I'm running towards the things of the world thinking it can fill me but the results I'm left with is that it's leaving me with a lot of stuff that is keeping me in a space where I'm mm. way more empty than what I did find myself when I was yearning for mm. certain things, mm. yeah. when I was looking out for certain things, you know? And I think it may be the same for many individuals that find themselves in those um, specific points of their life where it's yeah. like I'm running between wanting to learn more about God, learn more about his word, yeah. but also I'm trying to make sense to other people. Yeah. I'm trying to make sense to the world and and not look like a crazy person or, or not feel like a crazy person because whatever it is I'm receiving from God is real for me. But out there in the world, it doesn't look quite normal to people on, in the naked eye per se, mm. you know? So really it's about... um. How you can go about navigating it is first staying true. That's what I did. Um, mm -hmm. Staying true to the encounter that I had with the Lord and seeing what he took me out of. It took one simple prayer and I'm not going to be, um, you know, kind of judgmental on myself or anything. Yeah. But realistically, I was how we know as Christians what it takes to be as faithful in your prayers and on fire. I, uh, that is not how I prayed. <laughs> when I said that one prayer, I had faith that really was as sure. small as a mustard seed. So small compared to what I know now mm. faith should be like and mm. faith should um, look like. And it was so small. And still in that, God was able to minister to my heart. God was able to take me out of where I was placed and still show me mm. that, hey, there's a reason why you're in the family you are a part of. There's a reason why you're connected to the friends you're connected to. There's a reason why you're a part of the school or the university that you're in. There's a reason why you're an intern in the workplace mm. that you function as part of. There's a reason why I've put certain skills within you to yeah. become an artist, to yeah. become a lecturer, to be wow. become a teacher. I, there's a reason why I've, yeah. I'm constantly equipping you hmm. with these things. Not so that you can just be boastful in your approach to living life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But so that you can take the tools that I'm assigning to you mm. and that you can use it for the benefit of yeah. other people yeah. talk that talks you know yeah. so really it's just about recognizing who you are in god don't go out into the world and and try and find things in the world to complete you no thing will complete you no person will complete you it's being found in, in a position of being in the presence of the Lord that will complete you. Mm. Finish, clear. There's mm. nothing Chai. else that needs to be added, nothing else that needs to be taken Amen. away from that. Amen. It takes just that alone. Mm. It takes one drop of the blood of Jesus that is able to redeem you, Amen. pull you from a position of darkness into um, the position of light. Yeah. One drop of the blood that is able to forgive you of your sins because what happens to most of us when we recognize, oh, I've been living such a selfish life and oh no, what if God doesn't forgive me now? Yeah. You know, that hits yes. us because it's like, oh, now I finally know how I should be living, but I've wasted so much yeah. time in my life. I'm yeah. such a hypocrite. Real, ABC yeah. one, two, three. God is like, no, I've given you the blood of Jesus. Supply it. You're forgiven. Mm -hmm. Come with me. Yeah. Before you, for if you even get to a point of forgetting that, know that the blood alone, the drop of, of, of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all iniquities. Yeah. As you walk Amen. in the light and have you, as you have fellowship with other Amen. believers, Amen. the blood is able to cleanse you. You're able to be reminded, okay, one, one way I'm getting weakened in my faith, but 
that, hey, I've got peers that I'm walking with. I've got disciples yeah. I'm ministering to. I've got leaders that are I'm walking with me, that are empowering, that are pouring into me. Who am I to think I'm not enough to continue on this path that God has called me to? You know, one drop of the blood of Jesus that is able to justify your actions Amen. That you see yourself just as if you've never sinned. And one drop of the blood of Jesus that sanctifies you, keeps you on that path. Amen. Justified, keeps you on that path when there's persecution, keeps you on the path when you feel too weak, keeps you on the path when this, when Satan comes back with that one sin that you thought you've conquered. Sure. And he's like, ah, you thought wrong. <laughs> Let me try one more. You know, I'll give you a break for six months. I'll give you a break for two years. I'll give you a break for three years overcoming alcoholism but but just one just one time i'm gonna try and test the waters that's what satan does yeah. but we need to constantly constantly declare the blood over our lives constantly saturate and cement our walk with god in his presence alone we cannot do it without him living life alone we can't do without him you know, yeah. and that's one thing that I'll encourage anyone with that people that find themselves if they're in a space where the yearning of what it's like to just be in the presence of the Lord and to just know and feel the love of God to yeah. its entirety. That's all that it takes. Amen. You wow. know, Amen. yeah. Now, what a what a beautiful time I've had with you guys. I mean, these conversations are so profound and I believe every person that's going to encounter this podcast is going to mm. be moved. And, you know, during this youth month, I hope we do this again, actually. Yes. I can't believe we're done, you know. And it's weekly. <laughs> weekly. Okay. <laughs> Every day, yo. Yeah, so during mm. the w month of youth, we just like to, you know, amplify youth Christian voices. Amen. Just to let everyone know that we are authentic, we are radical, we are passionate, and we want everyone to know about Jesus. So thank you for tuning in, and till next time. Thank you.